Anna just hands this to me, so I get to lead off on this. Now, we'll work on this a little bit in, the, is it tomorrow's class, uh, Anna? Will I hear this? Oh, so, you know, so I, I don't think I want to get into great details of fingerings here, you know, and so forth. Um, but a couple of observations, I would say, first of all, bravo. I mean, these are very difficult pieces, and particularly the, the Toccata is one of the supreme difficult pieces in the piano repertoire. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's already a, a very impressive achievement. My reaction to the opening prelude is, of course, you know, the suite of pieces is based on the neoclassic ideal somehow of, of Couperin, and overall there's a, a sad uh, cast to, to the set of pieces. They're, they're you know, uh, elegies to, to friends who have been killed. And I think that's my way of saying that maybe the first piece, I think the, the prelude can be a little slower for sure. And, you know, I think what Ravel has written in this opening prelude here is not unlike certain passages of Chopin and the, and the piano concertos where there's, there's detailed things going on at a moderate rate of speed, but it should never be so fast that, that, uh, that the, the tonal substance is, is lost. The more expressive the notes sound, the better. And that's as true, that's actually very true for the Toccata even, for, for all of the music that, that um, you know, you really have to make sure that you're getting the uh, maximum tonal uh, projection out of the notes. If, but it's especially in the prelude, if it, if it whizzes by a little bit too too fast, so that we can't hear the shape of the and then certainly, you know, with this particular set of pieces. It's, of course, worth knowing that, that Ravel had orchestrated uh, some part of it, yes? So which movements uh, did he not orchestrate? Here's a trivia question for you. Mm -hmm, that's right. So, which always surprised me, actually, because the fugue, I always thought that the fugue would be the movement that would be the most likely to orchestrate as a wind trio. It would be just very easy to do, but he, he avoided that. The Toccata, of course, would be almost impossible. and. You've of course heard the orchestral version of this uh, of the suite. I think in the in the Furlan that, that that's well worth remembering is the textures of the woodwind writing and the the sounds, especially in some of these passages. Uh, you need to hear some lines are a little bit stronger than others, and I have the feeling right now it's it's you're sort of playing most of them at about the same the same level of intensity, but some should be stronger I think than others. Um, the, the Toccata we can work on quite a bit in the in the other master class because that's very nitty gritty, you know, uh, uh, piano playing. But you know, I think it's a better attack in the Toccata if you're going to have difficulty playing the end, the end pages at maximum tempo. Then better to start it slower and and not to worry about you know if you start too fast then it doesn't sound so great if you have to slow up at the end, but you know so I would say perhaps you you started a, a very adventurous tempo but it doesn't you don't have to uh, take it at such a such a blazing tempo. Also I think in the Toccata there are many places where the pedal can assist you greatly to give the sonority and the fullness to the tone uh, so that you know you're not trying to achieve these fortes with your hands alone, you know, which is very difficult to do at high, at high speed. It's kind of fun, usually the master class, I have great authority to say all these little details, but here I can share the work. I'm going to pass this to my distinguished colleague. Well, the thing is exactly what I was wanting to say, you just said it. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to point out exactly in the as well as in, in the prelude, as in the Toccata, we have this kind of virtuosic writing, you know, beginning, beginning of 20th century, and this filigrane-like um, kind of approach of the keyboard, uh, very much inspired by the models of French Baroque music. And it, it, it seems to me that it's very important not to let go of expressive things, either if they're included in the, in the fast line, or if they're presented in, in a different, uh, how, how, how should I say, in a different plan. Sometimes you have long notes and uh, underneath you have all this, you know, passage work going on. And those long notes need to be more projected and more expressive. So that's, that has been said. Um, and the other thing I would like to point out, which is, has also been said, 
is that in the four lane, it's such an extraordinary piece, uh, harmonic wise. I mean, it's just the harmonies are so incredible. Um, sometimes we really need, I mean, we always need to have a, have a feeling of what the harmony is composed of, uh, what is in there. We need to hear all the notes, but sometimes we, we need to be aware that there's a, a sonorous plan that should stand out. And, and it's, it's a little bit terraced, a little bit, you know, coming too much together, uh, as I sense it. So but everything had been said anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we learn um, the two-part inventions and then the three-part inventions and then the preludes and fugues because we learn polyphony. And, uh, and then we learn that if you play everything in the same sound level, you don't hear anything. And um, so one of Anna said what I wanted to say, which is the difference of t timbres, like uh, Havel had, uh, he was a wonderful orchestration, uh, orchestrator, so he thought about different timbres and uh, normally when you you, you sound about uh, you think about polyphony and he gives you the hint just because as she said you have one line that's articulated and the other is l like uh, chords that are m more expressive and and then when we define define what you will want then we want we begin practice and I think that you should practice it slowly before before thinking about going you should think about staying, because then you then you can articulate everything, and then you hear everything, and then you begin to hear faster. But first, we have to hear it slowly, because then our fingers have to first experiment staying in each note, and then 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 they they will go faster. But then to the the right tone that um, Professor Bruckner said, you know, to, for you to arrive to that right tone, you have to investigate that right tone. How do, do I want to touch that note to have that right tone? And then after I decide that, and then I, I experiment this slowly, so that my fingers get used to, to profit from everything of each note. Then I will think about different plans, and then I will begin thinking about going faster. Bef just after I'm able to listen to all those details slowly, otherwise um, the fingers go b before I thought. I, mean, I, I didn't hear, and then they are already playing. That's what I, I felt like while you were playing. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Just, just breathe, you know. Just stay, and then your breathing is going to to catch up with the tempo, and you are going to say in first in your tempo, and then you arrive at Havel's tempo. But uh, but you have to go all the way, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> good to talk. Actually, this comment just reminded me of something I was thinking about while you were playing that we have discussed before, but I think we should, you know, re-talk about it. Um, you sh I think in my, in my perspective, there's a slight rhythmical problem that makes that very often when you go from one beat to the other, you have a tendency not to say things to the end of each beat. So if you have four uh, uh, half... How, how do you call them? Not half notes. Well, no, no, the smikol shayesh, sixteenth notes. Yeah, if you have four sixteenth notes, I always feel like the last one or the two last ones are crammed in a in a very small space. There's a tendency to uh, push forward uh, in each. In very very often that happens, and that's dangerous because that gives you first of all, and then us the feeling that there's no breathing, and that that g gets you nervous. So. I mean, I think it's, for one thing, it, that's the consequence of your uh, s f stage anxiety, but at the same time, it's also something that, you know, fosters stage anxiety, so it's like uh, something that, you know, uh, feeds itself, so that, you know, more, of course, there's the, the strategy to, to, you know, make it better is to think about breathing, but also think about rhythmical stability, even in a fast tempo. The tempo can be fast and stable, or it can be fast and somewhat, you know, precipitated. So, can you just play the very opening of the prelude once again, just a few bars? No, no. no. Okay. 
good. That's yeah, that's wonderful. Very good. That's already much, much better because you know you, you now you're warmed up and you're sort of thinking about it. I want you to do that once again. Only even can you concentrate on even just another couple of notches slower than that. Good, good. That's that's quite wonderful. Now you know it, it may feel a little bit slow in the hand to you, but uh, you know the additional uh, item to take into consideration at all times is, of course, the acoustics of the space you're playing in. And in the practice room, perhaps the fast, faster tempo sounds about right. But when you have to fill the volume of the space, you know sometimes controlling the tempo is very, very important. Now, look, so now I'm feeling the tempo. If you watch my hand, like this. Can you do me a great favor and l s make yourself look stupid like I'm doing to myself right now and circle? And then put your hand down in your lap and just, you know, and then stop looking stupid. But look at the keys for a minute and let the feeling, yeah, put your hand down quietly in the keys. And instead of starting the piece, you know, don't start the piece. Da -da 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 -da. Play in your head about four bars of it, da -da 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 -da, of that first bar, over and over and over and over and over again. And when you're ready, just let your hands join in the music making instead of starting the music making. So that's really quite wonderful. So you you know very often the, the problems that one has with nerves and starting a piece you know comes from the sense of you're going on stage and then you know you can see it physically. It's a you see, you see pianists you know as as I watched you when you first began it was kind of like okay all right here we go <laughs> like that you know you dive in you know and this is like watching someone dive off the diving board a little bit scared. Okay, all right. instead of making this kind of smooth motion of leaving the, the land into the, into the water, you know, the music is kind of existing in its own space already, and, you know, or uh, another way of putting it is uh, I knew a conductor once who, who had a horrible Alabama accent, and in that, oh, atrocious accent of his, he, he said something that made great sense. He would, he would, he would say, all right, honey, now let's just, everybody, let's, let's just get on the treadmill, get on the treadmill, come on, everybody, get on the treadmill, get there. So that's where the, I'm afraid that circle, kind of, you know, thinking about that man telling us all to get on the treadmill. But there's a great amount of truth to it, you know, that, that the rhythm is something you join. You don't start the rhythm, you join the rhythm, you know, so you're feeling it in your body from within, and then it spills out. And that, that's a perfect example of that kind of thing. The Takata is a different feeling. That is a piece that kind of starts. It's a little bit of a different feeling, but that prelude is that's a, a very good example of that. The Furlan also actually though has the same has a similar kind of yum where one sort of joins joins the rhythm. I'll talk about that some more. All right, I've said enough.